All right, guys, it's a, can you believe it? It's another weekend, and if I sound a little bit out of it, it's because I ended up working uh, this Sunday, but luckily it was slow. Uh, I was late. Uh, I ended up throwing my guts up this morning, and um, for anyone out there who's actually, you know, like, thrown up or anything like that, you know you really don't have the energy to do much of anything after that, so it was a, a little bit of a rough stretch trying to pull myself back together. Uh, now, this time around, we're really not bringing you anything special, and I'm trying something a little bit new. Uh, we recorded, well, I recorded the gameplay for Diablo 3 here first, and then I'm also recording the audio and the face cam after. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing that is when I tried putting it all together, it lagged my computer to high hell. So, once I figure all of that out, then I'll go ahead and start recording the face cam and all of that all at the same time that you guys you you know you can get like some really good reactions and stuff like that uh, that's just gonna take a little bit of work on my part and I will figure that out sooner or later but no I've actually got a little bit of history with Diablo uh, funny enough as it is the Diablo series was the first series that I really ever played and I remember playing it as the first the first Diablo game uh, we had I had actually gotten the game as a gift from a, a, an old buddy of mine way back in the day. And I remember that iconic thing where when you talked to Deckard Candy, he was like, Stay a while and listen. Oh, that was the days. And I remember way back when, uh, when we first I first encountered the Butcher in the first game, that was scary as fuck. I remember opening up the door and hearing this, fresh meat. And uh, without even a second thought, I just closed the door and ran away. And then I'll be damned if the son of a bitch didn't come through the door at me. So uh, it was it was pretty scary uh, way back when. And the Diablo series has sort of gone... It's gone away since the first game. Um, there was Diablo 1, which was really good. And then it was sort of like a cult classic, you know? And then they came out with uh, the Diablo 2 and the, extan the uh, expansion packs. The expansion packs. Uh, the expansion packs. And those ones were pretty good. Uh, I remember getting all of those. And that's when Tyrael was still in his angel form. And he actually destroys the world crystal. Or something like that to save the human race. And that one was pretty good. And it sort of blasts him into Pando Pandemonium. I think the name of it is. And uh, so that one was that was really good. And then Diablo 3 came out, and a lot of people were actually sort of pissed off at the Diablo 3 when it first came out, uh, because apparently it wasn't viewed as like a true, a true blown uh, Diablo game. And bear with me here while I figure this bit out. And I guess it wasn't, you know, like, dark enough, or it was, wasn't, was you know, Diablo 2.51. Uh, I think what they were trying to do with Diablo 3 was sort of not... They were trying to do a Diablo game, but they were trying to actually make a, a new game with it. Um, and a lot of people were upset about that, surprisingly. Uh, for me, I just sort of looked at it as... Uh, it's a new game, more so as I looked at it as Diablo 2.51, as it were. And for the, the class here that I'm playing is actually the Crusader, which it's a, a pretty nice sort of... How do I say? A pretty nice uh, addition to the game. Must have stolen Ish, the they actually brought her in when they did the Reaper of Souls update. And I'm really waiting for another update to come through. Uh, because right now they do have some loose ends. Uh, but I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. Uh, if you haven't played Diablo 3, you're probably living under a rock. Uh, no offense to anybody living under a rock. But uh, gnomes and elves, please don't kill me. <laughs> uh, but I, I'd kind of like to see where it goes after all of this. Uh, so there is that. Um, now, what I really like about the Crusader is she's sort of like a... She's a tanky character, but she's more like a magical tank. Uh, she's like Sona from League of Legends. She's an AP tank. Um, and bear with me, I haven't played League of Legends in years, so uh, don't... 
Don't crucify me if I didn't quite have all my uh, my terminology correct there. Um, so the story so far is after the Diablo 1 series, uh, Aiden ends up uh, stabbing the soul stone in his head, and then Diablo takes him over and then he becomes the Dark Wanderer. And then in Diablo 2, you're destroying the soul stones, and then you're chasing down the Dark Wanderer, who's actually Aiden, or the hero of the first game. A little bit of uh, lore there, which I guess that's one reason why I really liked the Diablo series as much as I did way back in the day, um, was I'm actually a little bit of a lore rat, so anything that's got a lot of good lore to it, I'm, I'm sort of there uh, poking my nose into it. And actually, funny thing about this one here is I actually bought both the uh, the journal, uh, or the, uh, the Book of Cain, it's called, where it's sort of... Uh, Deckard Kane's view and like his storyline throughout the entire series, which is actually a pretty, pretty amazing thing. And then I also picked up the Book of Tyrael too, and I haven't completely read through it yet. I'm about halfway through that one, I put it down, and then I got to doing something else, and I've never got the chance to go back to it. Um, now, with uh, the new expansion of the Reaper of Souls, they're sort of revisiting their, like, the darker roots to it. So you're going more through dungeons, and you're going through the city, and everything sort of blarg and uh, completely evil, and you you don't really have, like, these the woods and stuff like that like you do in the, the main line. So that one was actually a pretty good, a pretty good expansion. Uh, if you like that, and give me a second here to. Thank you for your help. There we go. So I mean, if you guys like that, uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, I I I found it pretty nice. Uh, now, one thing I didn't really particularly care for back when I was a heavy Diablo player was that they they had made the legendaries way too easy to find. Now, like, as you can see uh, in this video, it hasn't quite come up yet, uh, but you get to... you knock down a couple of enemies, or a couple of low-level enemies with your crowd control, and then, you know, it's a lot easier to find that legendary, which for some... some folks is a, a loot grinder or a loot hunter, I guess that's sort of... meh? Uh, you know, because they're, they're sort of wanting to grind through the hordes of hell to to actually get that epic loot. Um, honestly, I really don't have much. For me, it's sort of meh, you know? Cool, I got that legendary loot because with my lucky, I wouldn't find shit. Um, <laughs> but, no, actually, if you guys do want to see a full playthrough of the Diablo 3 series, drop that like button and I'll do a full playthrough. Uh, we'll go through all the different classes and all of all of that stuff. I'll have to find a, a place for it, and I may put it on the weekend's gameplay for the time being. Uh, but we'll have to see how that goes, and then I'll run it that way too. Now, uh, the the Leah storyline is actually pretty pretty cool. Uh, I don't quite think it's over yet, and I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, but if you've ever, if you haven't played Diablo 3, it's sort of uh, one of those storylines that'll tug on your heartstrings. Uh, it was also nice to see Deckard Cain come back, and he's, Deckard Cain was sort of an iconic character through the entire series. Uh, which is really, really good, and I'm not going to spoil that, that either there, uh, if you guys haven't played Diablo 3. Um, now... The classes, the the ones for the Diablo 3 series were pretty cool. Uh, in Diablo 1, I think you only had, what was it, three classes, which was the mage, the rogue, and then you had the, the warrior guy. And uh, those were pretty cut and dry classes. Uh, you know, you could get some fireballs and stuff like that with them, but you pretty much played them to their strengths. Uh, in Diablo 2... They included a lot more classes. Uh, if I remember correctly, there was the Barbarian, uh, there was the Mage, and then there was also the Necromancer and a couple of others too. Don't kill me guys, I can't remember all those classes. <laughs> um, 
And then in Diablo 3, oh yeah, um, mind the lag here. Um, but in Diablo 3, they sort of brought in, you know, a lot of different classes that sort of makes the game a little bit more fun and each of them have their own storyline their own reason for being there uh you know in the the first diablo you go to tristram you go into the dungeon you kill diablo there you go uh in this one here uh, for example say the crusader uh she's actually hunting down and trying to destroy the, the corruption of the Zachary of Faith, uh, which you actually destroy that in Diablo 2, uh, which it was one of the demon lords trapped in a soul stone in the bottom of, uh, like, below the city or something like that, and it caused a bunch of corruption. So uh, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing, seeing how the Crusader... Uh, progresses through this storyline here after she realizes that you know that de that demon lord was actually destroyed uh, but that's a spoiler there um, <laughs> now uh, how do I describe it oh yeah and actually Blizzard got into a little bit of trouble with this one when it first came out they had actually had an auction house where you can just go in and you know spend real money to get a uh, to get you know gear and stuff like that, and a lot of people were upset because it actually took it away. Ah, yeah, here. Uh, I actually end up destroying those guys there, and then they drop some epic loot like right then and there. So though it is sort of nice getting you know that kind of loot like that, it sort of takes a bit of the fun away from from hunting down an epic loot and you know going through hordes and hordes of hell to get that one piece of like amazing loot but you know again as i said it's sort of nice being able to get that get that loot there uh, now it was kind of nice uh revisiting the uh the cathedral uh i don't if I remember correctly, it should be the cathedral from the first game. Uh, you just don't really have that guy there that's talking about the uh, the butcher making a swath through his friends. So, uh, shout out to anybody who actually remembers that from the first game. <laughs> now, like a, a cool little thing about uh, about Diablo three, if you sort of like that that power feeling is you have your original attack button and then you actually sort of have like a crowd control button too uh, where you just hit that right uh, mouse button and then uh, your character does like some swing attack or something like that that mows down a lot of the enemies there uh, so that one was pretty cool um in this video we go up until we actually save deckard kane and then we end it there. Uh, like I said, if you guys do want to see a full playthrough, let me know. And I'll continue with uh, this storyline first. We'll play through that one. And then I'll probably pick up the uh, the Demon Hunter after that. And then we can, we can go from there. Yeah. Sorry about that, buddy. He just sort of turns and then, you know, we just sort of viciously, like, smack him down without any without any hesitation there. Uh, now, there was something interesting, uh, or something nice that I thought about, uh, how do I describe it, when I heard about how they, they change these maps around, and that was that the maps are completely randomized, so you can't really just play it, start a new character, and run that same run, because the direction that you need to go to is going to be in a completely different part of the map somewhere. So that was sort of nice because you're always trying to figure out, you know, where that is, and it sort of forces you to explore a little bit. Uh, now I say that, but uh, somebody out there has probably sort of already figured out some kind of formula or something like that to to know where everything's going to be spawning and whatnot. But I don't really know on that. Uh, there probably is. But I'm just gonna go ahead and keep my head in the, s the my head. I'm gonna keep my head in the sand. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and uh, keep the the stars in my eyes and think that everything's completely randomized. Uh, so we have to explore it a lot more. Um, also, 
for right here, it was sort of nice being able to find these sort of uh, pedestals, and then you actually get to learn, you know, the the lore of the world and stuff like that. So I think that was something nice. I really did enjoy that. As I drove my blade through his dark and corrupted heart. And if I remember correctly, uh, you were actually fighting a couple of the lesser evils in this one, which were sort of some of the last demon lords standing throughout the games. And I'm not going to spoil the, the storyline uh, for here, um, but you pretty much go all over heaven and earth uh, and hell <laughs> to, uh, to actually go after these, these demon lords here. And, uh, funny enough as it is, uh, I've actually got a, well, I've already explained that in a different video, uh, but I've got sort of a love-hate relationship right now, sort of with, uh, the Blizzard games, uh, but for the time being, um, it's, it's sort of a regrowing passion for the, the, their series, uh, which I really do enjoy that. Just me here, you know, just sort of fiddling with the inventory. And if I remember correctly, pretty much what you did uh, is you went through it, you got the loot, and then you sort of found like this nice balance between buffing your character out, and then you also got some life steal to it too. And then you can just pretty much tank your way through them, smack them down and take life from them. Uh, and that one was actually, actually pretty nice. Instilling the notion of an imminent attack by Westmarch. I never really did any PvP with this game, though. The I don't know. I've never really been much of a PvPer with these sort of die. games. I've always sort of played it with, uh, you know, for the storyline and the environment and stuff like that. And if I remember correctly, yeah, uh, here is where we actually save Deckard Kane. Oh, minions, stay back, back, Play this wet home. The power of the fallen star awaken me, and soon all will suffer as I have suffered. Gods, bring me his bones. <laughs> Yay, hordes, and then uh, here we actually, we knock these guys down pretty easily, uh, but if I remember correctly, the first real boss we fight, the Skeleton King, uh, he can do some damage and you're sort of running around trying to survive that one. Stay a while and listen. <laughs> oh, thank you, but why did you risk yourself for me? Your niece asked me to find you, and I agreed. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, it sort of the video sort of ends uh, here pretty soon. So, uh, once we get through here, we'll go ahead and start the closer. All right, guys. Well, we'll go ahead and start the closer then. Uh, if you guys are seeing this video as a standalone video, I do welcome you guys kindly uh, to my series and my videos. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know I'm doing something right here. Uh, if you guys are, you know, stuck with us so far, I do thank you kindly from the bottom of my heart for being with us. Uh, stick with us for, you know, some more, some more content. And with that being said, thanks for tuning in. And as always, you guys stay safe out there.